Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, first, thanks for coming to my channel. I appreciate it. Uh, if you'd hit the like button before you leave, that helps me out a great deal. And um, I wanted to say thanks to all of my um, subscribers and YouTube people who, who frequently watch my videos. We've, uh, we're approaching 2,500 subscribers, and that just is amazing to me. Uh, we passed 100,000 views not too long ago, so uh, thank you for coming and being a part of the channel. I really appreciate it. Um, I wanted to give a special thanks to my newest uh, patron over at Patreon. Her name is Jill S. Uh, thank you for supporting me by signing up. Uh, if any of you are interested in finding out about the Patreon or uh, some of the other links that are in the uh, description of the video down below, you should make sure to check that out. Uh, there's lots of cool stuff going on over there. Um, today, I thought I would try something I've never tried before. I've seen some similar ones. Uh, online, but I'm going to do a ring that has kind of, uh, it uses silver balls, uh, soldered together, filed flat, uh, and then uh, I'm going to layer them so that they, it creates almost like a, the look of a, like a cobblestone fence or something almost, the, like a cobblestone wall or street, and see if I can make that happen. Uh, I think it'll be cool if it works out. Uh, so let's give it a try. Okay, so um, I did a little bit of prototyping in advance, and uh, what I ended up with was this right here, and that's kind of the look that I was looking for, and so I'm going to show you how I achieved that, and then we'll go ahead and finish the ring. I wasn't sure whether I was going to need two layers or three layers of the, the little silver balls here that I filed flat. Um, so I did two just to see how they would solder together in advance because I've never done one like this. So it was sort of a prototype, but I am going to use this as the top probably. However, I will go ahead and make one of these layers like I made just to show you how I did it. Um, and then I probably won't add it because I think this is thick enough for what I, my purpose was. But then we'll add a band to it. So basically this is made entirely of scrap except for the band which is going to be 18 gauge um, sterling silver sheet and uh, I think that's all we'll need so as always I use um, mighty flux which is a spray on flux and hard silver solder for virtually everything that I do so let's get started on this thing uh, first I need to make some random uh, silver balls so I got some scrap here I think it's fun to make silver balls but Today, I'm actually going to make them, if you noticed on this prototype I did, I tried to make some shapes that were not balls, uh, and as well as mixing in a few little round balls. But uh, So what I'm doing is I'm melting them, these, these pieces of scrap here, until they ball up, and then as they're cooling, I'm squishing them a little with my tweezers to give them some different shapes. So that's what we'll do next here. So here's a few pieces. We'll start with those. Never really done this before, and it was kind of fun to try something new. Got kind of a non round shape there. If you've ever done um, bean castings and you had some little pieces left over from bean castings, those would work really well for this too. When the weather warms up a little bit you know, these days, I'll go ahead and make some uh, freeform castings like that. Yeah, kind of kidney bean. <laughs> I'm going to set those off here to cool a bit. A few more pieces over here. I'm going to do a couple of small ones too. These are, those ones are all pretty good size, so I may cut some of this down a bit. I don't want to have all the same size things. We'll see. Let's try some of those and see how big they come out.
It's still pretty good size. Leave that one around. Ish. Good shape already. Those guys cool off for a minute. I think that's probably enough. Uh, but I wanted the top to be really kind of bold like this. I can see that. And the band to be relatively simple so it doesn't really distract from this. So I think I probably will. I'm going to create a band out of 18 gauge wire and make it. Rec uh, the overall ring is going to be rectangular. And this will be about how long it is. Um, Okay, so I measured uh, earlier uh, for about an eight to an eight and a half, and this is about how long it was right there. And so um, I figured the top of the ring is going to be about that big. That's why I chose this kind of a size range. And I may file that down a little bit more depending upon how things look. But I'm going to go ahead and make a, a band, and then we're going to—I think we're going to flatten one side of it, and we'll just solder it down onto this. Uh, so the flat side is stuck to this. So I may clean up the bottom a little bit so it sticks better. So I'll probably do that first and then we'll make the band. Oh, oops, you know what? Actually, I'm going to set that aside right now and then show you how I made that with an actual little billet there. Okay, so I got all these little uh, pieces of silver. They should be cooled off by now, I would think. Um, and what we'll do is I'm going to kind of pound them a little bit flat so that they got a nice flat bottom. All right, grab it. I've got this old dead blow hammer that. I think I inherited from my brother that's falling apart, so it hits pretty hard. If you have trouble hitting these and shooting them around the room, uh, somebody showed me if you put a piece of scotch tape over them and then pound them, it's less likely to send them flying if you don't hit it quite well. flattish spot on the pad. Remember, if I was making one this big, I, I need to make it bigger than that because I'm going to have to file off the edges to make it nice and square. So, let's make sure you can see what I'm doing here. Let's lay these out. And I can try and find a pleasing you know, way to group them together.
on the two earlier ones, what I did was got them pretty lined up, you know, in a pleasing sort of random, randomish sort of pattern. And then I went back and I added a few balls to fill in the spaces around around the edge here. So I think we'll do that probably. Oh, gotta add. I'm gonna use quite a bit of solder for this. It might be interesting to do this and run it through a rolling mill and see what it looks like. Be interesting to see if the solder joints uh, survive. Somebody in the comments today asked about uh, who's a beginner asked about uh, troubles with getting your solder to flow. And one of the biggest things is not getting it fluxed well enough. So. If it's not white and crusty like that, you probably want to consider um, heating it up a little, spraying some more on, heating it up till it dries and gets crusty. Have a lot better success with your soldering. There's quite a bit of metal here, so it's going to take a little bit of heating to get them all in the soldering range. A lot of mass there. I may make a couple of little tiny balls and put them in there, but we'll see. I think so. Let's cut a couple more pieces. I already used most of that solder.
that cool off just a skosh. Basically a little, almost a solid bullet of balls. I might have to try filing these flat and then rolling them through the roller and see what happens. I suspect that the solder joints will break, although I use so much solder on this it's going to be hard to break those. But it is probably actually snip off some of this or saw off some of this if you wanted to. I'm going to file the top a little bit flatter first. But to do a different kind of look you could leave it bumpy on top like that and just do a second layer underneath it but I'm just trying to do a kind of sleek look where they're sort of fitted together some little gaps in the middle It's all purple. Put that in the spot we think is the most appropriate for it. And then I can just trace it with my pick here. And then we can just use the jeweler saw to cut right along those, those lines there. And we'll get pretty close to this here. Do that. Okay, here's my sawing space. Let's see if we can't cut a straight line today. a blade. And as you can see it's not perfectly not perfectly square so I'll have to do a little more filing to even it up. Okay. I think I'm just gonna do a little <clears throat> more filing on this double billet that we made now that I showed you how to make the here's the one I was just doing. So I'll save that for another another future ring. Probably do a second stack on top of it like I did on this. And that's really what I did was I made two of those and then I set one down on the pad and then I um, I pre-melted a little bit of solder on the on the various pieces on one of them, flipped it over on top of the other one, heated the whole thing until um, until I could see it sinking down and settling in there and then I pickled it for a while and then I started cleaning it up with the file. So um, it soldered together pretty easily. So now I just need to do a little bit cleanup filing. I think I may cut this a little bit shorter. I think the top of the ring needs to be slightly shorter, not too much, but a little bit. So I'm probably going to take the jeweler saw and file some of this off. You can probably have some fun with this one as far as trying to, you know, every one is going to be a little different because of the different shapes of pieces of silver we soldered together. 
but you could do one that was all little circles a couple of layers of that might be kind of cool or you could try and line up like elongated shapes like bricks that might be kind of interesting to give it kind of a crude brick look they even look like cobblestones to me I think that may end up being the name of this ring Let me just go saw that off real quick. All right, so that's a little bit shorter. And it actually came out to be closer to where my original drawing was. So my next step, I think, is going to be um, to cut a strip of 18 gauge uh, stirring sheet, which I got right here. So we'll cut a piece off of there and make it about that size. Make a band out of it. This end's a little bit straighter the last time I cut. But we need to know how wide. So you know, I want it to be just about the same width. I need to kind of flow together. I'm gonna make it just a tiny bit wider so I can file it flush. I'd rather have a little room to mess up. So I'm going to do the whole ring with a rectangular looking profile, but I think you probably could do it where you tapered the band down a little bit and slanted the top down into it a little bit. I think that might look cool too. And some people don't like to have a real wide band on the bottom of their finger, so that's not comfortable for some. stuff starts to get to be a little hard to bend like this so if you need to after you've bent it part of the way you could always anneal it or use two pairs of pliers if you need to get a better grip on one side or the other sometimes I, sometimes my hands are better than others do a little bit of cleanup filing on this here. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to file it nice and smooth. I'm going to use a flat sided mandrel. I got a, I got a round mandrel that has one flat side for, uh, for rings that are shaped differently. I'll try that out and see how that works. So uh, yeah, let's clean this up.
flat side on the side. Here. I'm not going to hit too hard on here because I think I'm going to have to make that wider. I want to get the bottom of it kind of rounded. Kind of going on instinct here. I've never done quite this sort of thing. So it needs to be significantly wider than that. This side is going to be the downside, I think. Let's see if I can move that bend a little bit. I'll move it on this side a little bit more. Then we'll see if we can sharpen that. To move the bend, I'm basically putting it where I want it to bend and then I'm making a real sharp pinch so it flattens that spot out there. And then I'll have to go back and manually straighten it out a little bit like this. Use a little elbow grease. Probably only know that idiom if you're a geezer like me. So I think we're pretty with it within spitting distance. There's another old idiom. So within spitting distance. <laughs> I think I'll probably stop right there. And then we can, if we need to, we can fine-tune it by filing down the ends a little bit more. So alright, so let's get this squared up more. This is gonna be a bit of a weird shape ring, so some people might not find it comfortable. Some people seem to disregard comfort over style, so they may see this as a bit of, you know, something unusual, so they may not care so much about whether it's comfortable or not. I don't know, honestly, though. It may, it may be more comfortable than you think. I'm kind of rushed for time today, so there's a, I think there's a lot of fun things you could do with this one. I may revisit this style in some future video and do some alterations and see what comes out. Because it seems like it has some fun things you might be able to do to make it change up a little bit. I think I'm going to solder that on. And then we'll go from there. I think the easiest way probably would be to uh, let's sweat a bunch of solder onto this thing. Set this the way we want it to be sitting. Make sure I get the right side sitting up because one side's still got a little bit of a curve on it, which is problematic. I like the patterns on both sides, so. Choice. But. All right, I'm going to cut a bunch of solder here. And throw a couple more on there just for good measure. Really on the edges, I want to make sure it solders as close to the edges as possible.
pretty good. You're still in frame there. And let's see if we can't get these two soldered together. There's a lot of mass in this bottom piece. I'm really going to pump some heat into it from the sides. Because the one on top will reach temperature pretty easily. The bottom one will not. You start to see that inside seam melting again. It's a good sign that the stuff underneath is pretty hot. So that's a good, a good indicator for us. It's looking pretty good so far. It's possible I'll need to go back and do some touch-up soldering. But all right, so I'm gonna air cool this for a minute, and then I'm gonna let it pickle. Then I'm going to do some major cleanup, and we'll see how it ends up looking up. Here is the final piece. I think it actually came out kind of cool. Um, there's some things I like about it, some things I don't like about it, but it does look kind of sleek and contemporary. Um, so I don't know, I, I think the technique of what I was doing with the balls um, could be applied in a number of different ways in some different instances, like I could make a totally different style of band because uh, this one's sort of avant-garde looking but it's impractical. So you can sometimes sell those sorts of things and people, some people like those sorts of things. Other people just want something um, that's super comfortable that they can wear every day, you know. This might be a special occasion ring for someone, but um, I think there's some other ways I can incorporate this particular part of it uh, and also um, have a more comfortable kind of band style, so. But I will take some better pictures of it, put them at the end. Okay, so that was the ring with the, the rocky looking surface, and I hope that you enjoyed that and found it to be useful and entertaining. If you did, make sure to hit the like button, and uh, I suggest you watch a couple of other videos here. I'm pretty sure this is going to be number 140, uh, so there's a lot of content here, and there's a lot of good stuff for beginners, as well as some good ideas for people who are a little bit more advanced as well. So I think you can find some things that are useful to you. So consider subscribing, and make sure to um, hit the bell button too, so you get updates of when I release a new video. So. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope uh, you had a good time. Uh, feel free to leave comments, and we'll see you later. Uh, take care. Happy silversmithing.